The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shishina Rola. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, educators on Grand Bahama getting some helpful information on how to manage stress during Freeport Primary School's Professional Development Day. Teachers from Freeport Primary, East Grand Bahama, and the Keys Pack, the Foster B. Pastina Center, as clinical psychologist Dr. Wayne Thompson delivered an eye-opening presentation. Dr. Thompson says the education system and those who serve in it are under stress and attack on many fronts. You're not stressed out because you're weak. You, you're not stressed out because you lack something. You are stressed out because of the new social demographics of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. A generation ago, students were prepared to enter the controlled environment called school. And so educators did not have to invest time in helping children understand proper boundaries, how to behave in the classroom, how to respect property and order. In the 21st century, our students are socially dysfunctional when they reach primary school. Dr. Thompson says this means that the, ed the, the approach to education must change. If students were prepared to learn a curriculum, that's one thing. But if students come to the classroom dysfunctional, a decision has to be made on which comes first, the curriculum or life. And we find ourselves grappling in the 21st century as to which one we should do. Well, let, let me give you a reality. 70% um, of the children that enter the school system are socially dysfunctional. So if you stick with the curriculum, at your pinnacle best, you will reach 30%. Maybe that's the reason why 66% have been leaving high school socially and academically illiterate, not suitable for employment. Now, the doctor told teachers that the only way to properly manage stress is to take control of their lives, and he encouraged them to do just that. Grand Bahama is now better prepared to respond should a disaster occur on this island. The National Management or Emergency Management Agency is now in possession of a 4,800-square-foot state-of-the-art disaster warehouse constructed in Hawksville with the assistance of the United States government. During the official handing over ceremony, the nation's leader, Prime Minister Perry Christie, said he believes this facility will be most beneficial to the people of Grand Bahama and other islands in the northern Bahamas. He believes it is a significant move in the preparedness efforts. It is something that we have to keep on working at, disaster mitigation. And there is no island, I think, in our commonwealth like Grand Bahama. And given the experiences that we have to learn from Grand Bahama, right, what is it we ought to be doing as a country now to further mitigate what happens in a hurricane. Hurricane Hole Road, you know, all the areas that are flooded from West End straight up here to Freeport. What are we doing to mitigate, to prevent further instances, or if we can't prevent it, to put in place set procedures that will automatically follow, and to do so with the best advice possible. The nation's chief said NEMA is responsible for ensuring that disaster mitigation and preparedness efforts are ongoing throughout the archipelago and that we must now focus on other serious issues that could pose a challenge. Climate change becomes an incredible item that we don't talk about in the Bahamas, which means rising sea levels. Because though we are not like the Maldives, right, we are a flat chain of islands. And as the, we measure the rise of sea levels, and you start to look at what is happening in the world, then you know we have some issues in our country. Now, the Prime Minister expressed gratitude to the United States government for donating the disaster relief warehouse. He said it will go a long way in helping to enhance the emergency response efforts. 
The first team wishing to represent the Marco City constituency at the local government level announcing their candid candidacy this afternoon. As Megan Shepard reports, the chief counselor is seeking his third term come June 23rd. Current chief counselor for the city of Freeport, Kevin Ferguson, is seeking to be re-elected for a third term. Ferguson says his track record speaks for itself, as he has focused on a number of initiatives in the community as well as being a voice for the people. Ferguson says while the council has focused on the cosmetics of the community in the past, this year he and his team plan to make an even greater impact in the lives of the constituents. I've started some of the work that I believe was needed to be done in the city of Freeport. Firstly, the rejuvenation of our assets. I think that we would have done a fairly good job in doing that. Uh, but now I'm trying to bring local government to the place in which it ought to be. Real governance on a local level. Every government ought to have a home. The home for central government is parliament. I believe the home for local government should be city hall. And that's, that's still to the top of my agenda. Also running with Ferguson is Omis Lightborn. She says she has been working with residents in the community for years and knows their concerns. She believes the key to making a difference is assisting the elderly and molding the future generations. I feel personally that local government should step out of the box honestly, because it is time that they just stop uh, worrying about the infrastructure of the, the, of the areas and keeping this up to date and keeping that up to date. We have lots of seniors, we have lots of young people out there that need assistance. Keytron Meadows wraps up the ticket for the team. At 21 years old, he is the youngest candidate in the race and says he wants to make an impact on the young people of Grand Bahama. I worked in Marco City for the past 10 years, dealing with the individuals who lived in Marco City from toddler to elderly persons. And I feel that we can do more in local government with, with dealing with our constituents in Marco City. And I feel that we are really dealing with our young people people in our constituency because if we notice now that the young individuals in our country are on the wrong path and me being a young Christian leader in my community I believe that all is not lost but the young persons in our country and I feel that with myself being a local government representative of Marco City I have a lot I can implement dealing with the young persons inside the Marco City constituency. Local government elections are slated for June 23rd. Megan Shepard, ZNS Network News. In other news, leaders in the regenerative medicine and stem cell industry will convene on Grand Bahama this week to discuss all aspects of that industry. Grand Bahama is moving closer to developing a medical tourism industry and the enactment of legislation for stem cell research and therapy has paved the way for medical experts to pursue this lucrative business in the Bahamas. Officials believe tax concessions under the Hawksville Creek Agreement makes this destination ideal for this type of touristic development. Regen regenerative medicine will be in introduced to the island with the completion of the Okeanos Heart Institute and the first commercial center on the Mall Drive within the coming months. Now it is believed that stem cell research and therapy could provide major benefits to the island. Organizers of this week's conference say the global initiative will also promote economic and trade benefits to the Bahamas. The stem cell conference opens tomorrow morning at the Grand Lucine Resort. Stay with us, the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues right after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. As the government forges ahead with efforts to increase revenue, the public debate on the proposed value-added tax system continues. The Ministry of Finance has released the first draft of the value-added tax bill and regulations, but many believe the implementation of a 15% tax is too much for Bahamians at this time. Among them, founder of Enough Movement and Solution Radio, Kendall Colbrook. If you're serious about that, why go and excuse, excuse the offshore banks that has over $5 trillion in 2012 not being taxed. Why not tax the financial service who's raping us? Why? We, we played this game by the rules. Us poor people played it by the rules. We were working poor. We are working poor now. We are working poor. You understand? So all I'm saying is, that ain't a thing. Go to, oh, if you do me a favor, anybody out there, go online, go to Facebook, and you type in these words. St. Kitts and Nevis 
warning Turks and Caicos. You have government's official warning us, warning the Bahamas, once you could see it, not to mess with it. It will destroy your country. Cobra also has this bit of advice regarding the crime problem in New Providence. Plant some mobile police station in the hotspots. The same thing we did in Redwood Lane over here in Grand Bahama. They say we have a crime problem. This is written in the Freeport News and Statistics Online that this is the lowest crime has been in Freeport in 15 years. So when you say the Bahamas have a crime problem, that's why we are being whipped with what's going on in Nassau because they don't have nobody thinking outside the box. Plant some police stations on these corners. That's a mobile police station and a trailer. Now that when the, the, you don't have to go run to go pick up bodies anymore because you're on the scene and you're preventing it. We're trying to prevent our young men from going to jail. The Bahama Chamber of Commerce launching its 2014 series of business seminars today. The aim is to educate and be an information resource for small businesses in the community. Second Vice President Billy Bo says the first seminar will take place tomorrow under the theme Entrepreneurship 101. We want to have people create their own opportunities and vision. And so this seminar actually would help people to frame that and to get them motivated towards how do I frame it, how do I put a business plan together, how do I market, how do I find funding, you know, how do I materialize what I have in my head into an actual viable business. Now Bo says the seminar will give those in attendance new and innovative ways to do business on Grand Bahama. Not only are we going to host these seminars, but our plan is to actually continuously work with persons in the community so they can come here to the chamber and call upon the various professional leaders that we have here. We have lawyers, we have um, various business owners who can really mentor others and that's, that's one of the things that we want to do too. Not just have a seminar and have people walk away but come back and we can consult and help them to build and develop and steer them towards opportunities for funding and grant monies. Entrepreneurship 101 will be held at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce tomorrow. Interested persons can register before the seminar begins. And it's the first in a series of comedy shows planned by Flying High Promotions. This weekend, some big international comedians are expected to travel to Grand Bahama under the theme Love and Laugh. Public Relations Director Yolanda Handen says this show is one that Grand Bahamians cannot afford to miss. We have Michael Blackson. He's known as the African King of Comedy. He's hugely funny and very successful. He's also, um, he was made popular from the Friday After Next series with Ice Cube. He's known as the African King of Comedy because he performs in a dashiki. And so I think he'll go over very well with Bahamian audiences. We also have uh, Brooklyn Mike and we have A.G. White. These New Yorkers are big in the United States, big on the comedy scene in New York. And the good thing about all of our comedians, they've also played internationally. So they're not just local um, to the United States. They've been all around the world, they've toured, and so they know how to entertain an audience. Now, Hannah says they are excited about this lineup for the first time ever. Flying High Promotions has invited a woman to be a part of the comedy show, and she says a Bahamian comedian is also on board. We also have Stephanie McRae. She's the first ever female comedian on the Love Laugh comedy show series and so we're so excited we got a woman coming to entertain the audiences so Stephanie will be here and then we got a Bahamian guy on we have a Bahamian comedian we have some Bahamian flavor on this show Daddy Whites he's popular in Nassau um, aka Jonathan Russell is his name and he's going to be taking the stage with these comedians as well the tickets are $40 general admission uh, VIP is $60, and they are on sale right now over at Expressions and Gizmos and Gadgets. Now the show starts at 7 p.m. in the Grand Lucayan this coming Saturday. Stay with us, Ricardo Lightborn has a check on sports. Hey everybody, welcome to Sports and Mercado Lightborn Sports Night is dedicated to the ladies at Flamingo Air. They say that uh, taking care of you every day is their way. And Mike Lang, you still celebrating birthdays? Well, at least you stopped counting, bro. Anyhow, the Bahamas Docks Federation Gold Cup tournament was played at the Taxi Union Hall. This was a tussle over two days. 
The Gold Cup Darts Tournament featured the best darts players in the country over two days. The game is hand and eye coordination and darts placement. The Grand Bahama men went into the tournament confident. Abaco the defending champion and a good start at that. New Providence with a full squad and an eye on that cup. Patrick Knoll says he's confident in New Providence and who do you see as his ace? Victor Cartwright is probably uh, one of our top players along with Christian Knowles. Um, we got some young up and coming shooters that have um, just recently started to shoot real well. Abaco came ready to play and play tough darts, says Roscoe Thompson. Again, this is the Gold Cup and you better come ready, he says. We're defending champs of Gold Cup from last year and right now we're playing very well. Little uh, nerves at the beginning, but right now we're in the doubles event and we're either tied or winning the doubles, so we're doing, doing very well. And Luther brought a young team to the Gold Cup and they gave the field fits. Tony Crane says they're the new kids on the block and they got game and that. I think it's our fourth year in the, the Federation and we, we're really trying to lift ourselves up um, out of that, that basement place, you know. The standard is excellent, as you know. Abaco, Grand Bahama, Nassau, they've been at it for 30, 40 years and, and we're just getting started. But we feel we're getting better all the time. Um, and we, we brought what we thought was our strongest team. The host Grand Bahama with pressure to win and winning style was a concern, but not that serious, said Byron Johnson. We started pretty good. We uh, started beating Eleuthero 6 0. We won against Nassau 4 2, and we're currently standing 2 2 against Abaco. So we're, we're in pretty good shape right now, but it's a long way to go. Unofficially, Grand Bahama won the Cup, New Providence second, Abaco third, and Luther fourth. Bahamas Darts Federation has not made the results official, and we wait for that notice. And I'm still waiting, so you guys please tell me who won the Gold Cup, okay? Legacy Baseball opened its 2014 season on the weekend. Let's go to the YMCA where they had a motorcade. Would you believe that? The Legacy Baseball started on the weekend with the march from Kentucky on the mall to the YMCA. The Sluggers have waited all winter long to play baseball and it's time. The march on the mall was lots of fun for the Legacy Little Leaguers and the police kept them safe. Legacy Baseball President Roscoe Camp was on the march with the Little Leaguers. Opportunity to play baseball at all levels is the aim of Legacy Baseball this season. We're looking to have a lot of a lot of kids come out. We're looking to have interplay with the with the Grand Bahama League, and we're looking for more coaches, males, fathers, and stuff to come out and support their kids. Legacy Baseball will feature five age division T-ball, coach pitch, minor, major, junior, and senior baseball, and every child must play. We have about um, 16 teams registered already. Um, we're still looking for a few more sponsors and um, each team carries about um, 14 players. Legacy Baseball will play interleague ball with the Grand Bahama Little League this year and that sits well with the league. We have a lot of kids who, who, who never played before. We'll be um, trying to teach them how to throw, catch, run and learn the game. We have a lot of players who have been there for a while who are, are pretty good and we'll be working on their, on their skills. Legacy Baseball is underway and it's the baseball players of tomorrow playing ball. And uh, quickly uh, from the wires of the Hugh Campbell Tabernacle defeated Doris Johnson 52-44 today. Abaco Central over Clement Howell 57-38. Sunland won. Defeated Harbor Island 63-30. St. George's over Central Luthra leading right now 53-27. The guys down south will tell you more in the National Sports Package. But that is my time tonight.